Barnstable this morning, just about six minutes past the top of the hour on this Tuesday morning. I'm Sarah Colvin and joining me live on the phone, I welcome our Chief of Police of Paul McDonald. Chief, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great, Sarah. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. So a busy weekend, Chief, for the Street Crimes Unit. Lots of arrests, lots of incidents. Uh, right. Let's talk a little bit about some of those. It was a busy weekend. Obviously, uh, the kids are back uh, from college and the bars were, bars were extremely busy both Friday and Saturday night. Um, the Street Crime Unit made a total of five arrests. Um, two of them were for motor vehicle charges, uh, one Saturday and one on, excuse me, one Friday and one Saturday night. Um, the first gentleman that was arrested was Jonathan Cotel, who was well known to the street crime unit. Anytime he shows up, they keep an eye on him. He was operating a motor vehicle. They knew his license was suspended, and he was subsequently uh, arrested for operating after suspension. Um, the other motor vehicle um, arrest was uh, Sergeant McGinn observed the vehicle on who was assigned to street crime unit from the Mass State Police, uh, observed the, a vehicle on Bath Road travel over the, uh, the island in the middle of the road, and a Robert Schaff um, from Marshfield was, there, was eventually arrested, charged with operating a motor vehicle under, under the influence of alcohol. The other arrest was uh, two adult males on Friday night uh, flagged down Officer Wright, who was assigned to street crime unit, and they, he told them that he, they had just picked up an individual who needed a ride, they gave him a rather short distance. Um, they offered him uh, some, some alcohol. When the, uh, the kid pulled out his wallet to pay for him, he reached in and stole the kid's money and took off on foot. Um, the street crime unit and Boss McKinnon Officer Sean Roycroft eventually found him. And the individual was identified as Brian J. Walls, age 42, a Bonstable, and he is very well known to the Bonstable Police Department. Indeed. So certainly a, a busy weekend for the street crimes unit. And of course, you mentioned, you know, the college kids uh, back and it certainly has been busier here in town. Uh, anything else of note uh, in terms of police action chief over the past week? Well, some good news. Um, last Tuesday on June 2nd at 11.08 p.m., I'm Officer Armando Feliciano and Corbin Fry as they respond to the highest area motel for an unknown medical emergency. Upon their arrival, they were directed to a room by a bystander. And when they entered the room, they found a woman in advanced labor and about to deliver a child. And Officer Feliciano and Corbin Fries uh, delivered their first baby girl. Uh, by the time the, uh, the rescue got there, uh, they'd already made the delivery. So it was a very exciting night for those two officers. Indeed. I love hearing those, uh, those good news stories, Chief. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. Well, that is, that is a good news story. But unfortunately, the night afterwards, the night afterwards they, both officers responded to an armed robbery on uh, on, um, uh, I believe the name of the road was uh, Sumi Road, right off of West Main Street, and they ended up arresting the father, uh, Nazario Garate, 33, for armed robbery. He broke into a house, put a gun to a, uh, to a girl's head. The gun turned out to be a pellet gun. Um, he was stopped a short distance later. He was arrested, and when Amanda Feliciano was talking to him, realized that he was the father of the baby girl that he just delivered the night before. Not exactly what a new father should be doing the day after his baby is born. And then to make it even worse, uh, the second subject in the guy, Anthony Fernandez, uh, he was charged with uh, possession of crack cocaine with intent to distribute and found out that he was the uncle of the baby girl. Mm, not good. No, not good. Not good. At all. Not good. Um, Started off well, but ended kind of bad. Indeed. Uh, Chief, I well, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the operating budget. Of course, uh, you were in front of town council last week presenting yep. uh, one of the things uh, that, that was approved is adding another officer to the community impact unit. And I know right. the CIU was really, uh, you know, hard at work out there on Main Street and certainly could use that help. Right. It, uh, it was good. The, uh, the town council, town manager, very supportive of the police department. Actually, our authorized rates got bumped up by two offices. It goes from 115 offices to 117 offices. One office will be our community affairs officer, which will be assigned directly to the regulatory services. The second officer, you know, once he gets hired, will be assigned to the community impact unit. As you know, the community impact unit started approximately a year ago, but they are they are simply overwhelmed with the amount of work that they have to do. They had no idea it would take so long. Just dealing with one client takes hours upon hours to uh, to rectify the situation. So we're going to try to get them as much help as they need. Great. And is that, uh, would you say the, the street crimes unit and the community impact unit, would you say those are kind of the busiest units uh, in, in the department right now? No, the patrol force is by far the, is by far the, the busiest. I mean, they respond to, you know, approximately 60,000 calls for service. You know, the CIU and, and the uh, SU, they're both a um, specialized unit. Both of them are assigned right at downtown Main Street, Hyannis. The CIU unit, they're, they're, during the, they're all there during the daytime, and they take care of all of the problems there. Unfortunately, most of their problems are dealing with the homeless population in and around Main Street. 
to skew you in the street crime unit, they come to work at 4 o'clock, and they pick up the slack at the, at the nighttime. You know, they handle all the body disturbances and anything, any and all problems that are on Main Street. So uh, it's really a concentrated effort in and around Main Street. You know, we, we put a priority on downtown IS. We know that's a hub of bonds, but it's the hub of Cape Cod, so we want to make sure that that's a safe environment down there. Indeed, and of course, uh, budget time, and as we approach the new uh, fiscal year, is it time to look ahead uh, and, and setting goals? And, and could you tell me, Chief, a little bit about some of the goals that the department has for the coming fiscal year? Well, I, I will tell you, I told town, town council, yo, last uh, last Thursday night, the two of the biggest issues facing the police department right now is one, um, the opiate epidemic, um, where where we, we're up to May 1st, we've had uh, 80 overdoses and 80 fatalities, and the second one is dealing with the homeless popular homeless population. Um, in downtown Hyannis, you know, we've been working work on this years and years and years, and a lot of strides have have been made. But every time we take three steps forward, we take four steps backwards because we have to stop the flow of homeless people who keep coming to downtown Hyannis. You know, and that's a huge problem right now. We have to stop the drugs from coming into Hyannis, and we have to find a better solution uh, for dealing with the homeless population in southeast of Massachusetts. It just can't all fall on the shoulders of of downtown Hyannis. And that, that is a huge problem right now for us. Absolutely. And I know that there have been some meetings and some talks of possibly relocating some of those services. Uh, how hopeful are you, Chief, that that might actually get off the ground? Well, the first thing that has to happen is the shelter has to move. I mean, there, there's no AFC in the butts about it. The shelter has to move. The shelter cannot stay one block off the main commercial street. That has to move, and I feel quite confident the eventually that's going to go. Unfortunately, it has a terrible reputation, so it, it, it's going to face resistance wherever it goes. But... When it moves, it's going to be a newer building, a professional staff, and it's going to be run as run as a professional shelter, more of a transitional shelter rather than rather than an emergency shelter. As far as decentralizing all the social services, that that could be a problem. The the social services that have sprouted up all around Main Street are there to support the clientele in NOAA, and we are trying to drastically reduce the number of people at NOAA shelter. Indeed. Well, Chief, I thank you so much, as always, for joining us here on Barnstable this morning, and we will check in with you again next Tuesday. Have a okay. great day. See you then. Thanks. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Chief of Police Paul McDonald joining us as he does each and every Tuesday morning. Our community profile with him.